Let k be the field. We have q adjoined square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5. So k is going to be the splitting field of the polynomial. f of x equals x squared minus 2 times x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 5 over the rational numbers. We want to know three things. First, we want to find the Galois group of our polynomial. So that'll be the group of field automorphisms of k that fix q. Then I want to find all subgroups of our Galois group. Finally, we want to use 2 to find all subfields of k over q. Now, first we should sort out what's happening with k. So you should verify. Okay, I'll start off with the rational numbers. We'll have x squared minus 2 is irreducible over q, so we adjoin square root of 2. Then we'll have x squared minus 3 is irreducible over q adjoined square root of 2, so I adjoin square root of 3. Then finally, we'll have x squared minus 5 is irreducible over q adjoined square root of 2, square root of 3, so we adjoin square root of 5. So we sort all that out. That says that our field k can be written out as all elements of the form like this. So the a's here are going to be rational numbers, and then you note we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 basis elements over q. So that means that our splitting field is going to be an extension field over q of degree 8. First, let's find the Galois group of our polynomial. Now, k is the splitting field of our polynomial over q. So, or the Galois group is equal to the degree of our extension over q, which is equal to 8. Now, if I want the isomorphism class of our group, we need to look at specific automorphisms. So, suppose we have an automorphism from k to itself, fixing q. Since the elements of q are fixed, we need only tell where square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5 go. Once they're determined, the rest of our basis elements are also determined. Now, because the Galois group permutes the roots of the irreducible factors in our polynomial, square root of 2, for instance, has to go to either square root of 2 or minus square root of 2. So we'll define sigma sub 2 as the automorphism that carries square root of 2 to minus square root of 2, fixes square root of 3 and square root of 5. Likewise, I'll define automorphisms sigma sub 3 and sigma sub 5. Quick check shows the sigmas commute and they have order 2. Note, if we take all possible products, we'll get seven elements of order 2. So that means our group is going to be isomorphic to three products of Z mod 2. So that's our isomorphism class. Next, we find all subgroups of our Galois group. First, we have the easy ones, the identity subgroup, and the group itself. But when a subgroup of order 2, all we need to do is take the identity element, and then I throw in any other element, which will have order 2. So we're going to have seven choices for that second element. So I have seven subgroups of order 2. For subgroups of order 4, the recipe we're going to use is going to be special to our isomorphism class. We take the identity element, I take any two elements that are not the identity, and then we take their product. So the number of ways I can get a subgroup of order 4 seven ways to choose x, six ways to choose y, that forces x times y, and then the number of ways I can order these three elements, three factorial or six, so we divide by that. So I'm going to have seven subgroups of order four. Finally, we find all subfields in k over q. To do that, we'll use the Galois correspondence from the fundamental theorem of Galois theory. So, we have splitting field K over Q. The Galois correspondence states, 
if I have a subgroup H of the Galois group, I can assign that to a subfield of K over Q by just taking the fixed field under H. So it's going to be the subfield that's fixed pointwise under each automorphism that comes from H. In the other direction, we have a subfield F in K over Q. I can assign it to a subgroup of the Galois group by just taking every automorphism in the Galois group that fixes our subfield F pointwise. So this is going to be how we find all of our subfields. Now, special feature of our Galois group, we have that G is abelian, so all of its subgroups are normal. So that means each subfield is going to be a normal extension of Q, which means each subfield is going to be a splitting field for some polynomial over Q. Let's go through our subgroups. First, we have the identity subgroup. So there's only one automorphism here, sends every element to itself. So the fixed field is just going to be K itself. At the other extreme, we have our entire Galois group. In this case, the fixed field is just going to be Q. So we'll be able to see explicitly as we run through examples, okay, the more elements you have in your group, the smaller your fixed field gets, and we'll see here, we'll be able to eliminate everything but Q. Now, if I consider the subgroup E comma sigma two, we note here, sigma two is gonna carry square root of two to minus square root of two, fixes square root of three, square root of five. So that's gonna tell us how we act on the basis. So we see that here, square root of two is not fixed, square root of three and square root of five are fixed. So the fixed field is gonna be Q adjoined square root of three, square root of five. And then we know that's gonna be the splitting field for X squared minus three times X squared minus five over Q. If we replace sigma two with sigma three or sigma five, we can repeat our argument. Then we get three subfields for subgroups of order two. Now, consider E comma sigma two sigma three Consider the effect of sigma two, sigma three on our basis. So square root of five is fixed. Square root of two and square root of three are gonna to go to their negatives. So they're not in the fixed field. Then if we take their product, the negatives cancel. So square root of six is fixed. So we can adjoin square root of five and square root of six. We check the rest of our basis. Square root of 30 is fixed, but that's gonna be covered here. We repeat this argument for sigma three, sigma five, sigma two, sigma five, that gives us another three subfields for subgroups of order two. For the final subgroup of order two, we have E, sigma two, sigma three, sigma five. So we check the effect of sigma two, sigma three, sigma five on the basis. Square root of two, square root of three, square root of five, go to their negatives. So they're not in the fixed field. We take the product of any two, the negatives cancel, so they're all in there. Square root of 30 goes to its negative, so that's not in the fixed field. So we join square root of six, square root of 10, square root of 15. But we note, square root of six times square root of 10 is square root of 60. That's two times square root of 15. So we don't need to adjoin the last element. So that's our last fixed field for a subgroup of order two. For subgroups of order four, we're gonna have three cases. So I'll let I, J, and K stand in for two, three, and five, possibly permuted. For case one, we're gonna take generators sigma I, sigma J. So the last element is sigma I times sigma J. We know that's gonna fix square root of K, where K is the index we're not using. Then I'll leave it to you to show that no other element in the basis besides one is fixed. So our fixed field is gonna be Q adjoined square root of K. So from that, we get three subfields for subgroups of order four. Next case, I'm gonna have generator sigma i, then we'll have sigma j times sigma k, and then the product of all three. Sigma i, okay, that's gonna fix square root of j times k. Sigma j times sigma k, well, that'll send square root of j, square root of k to their negatives, but with the product, they cancel out. So 
that's fixed under sigma j, sigma k. And then if we take sigma i, sigma j, sigma k, again, that fixes square root of j times k. If we check on the basis, no other elements are fixed besides one. So our fixed field is gonna be q adjoin square root of j times k. So we get another three fixed fields here. Finally, we're gonna have subgroup E comma sigma two sigma five comma sigma two sigma three comma sigma three sigma five. Leave it to you to show the fixed field here is gonna be Q adjoin square root of 30.